If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. This modern day proverb can be attributed to anything from your personal life to large scale projects. I've been fortunate enough to be a part of some very successful projects and some disastrous ones. And one of the key differences between the two was the plan or lack thereof. But how do you go about effective planning? I've used everything from spreadsheets, whiteboards and countless applications like Rike, Asana, Microsoft Project. But the one that stuck with me the most was Trello. Today I'm going to show you how you can use the ancient Japanese art of Kanban or Kanban or... And British people would call it Kanban, but to Japanese it's more uh, plain, a flat saying like Kanban, Kanban. And Trello to plan, track and manage your everyday life. And you'll be able to apply this methodology to almost any project or plan you manage. Well, let's jump into it, shall we? So very quickly, why Trello? Easy. Trello is beautifully designed, very, very easy to use, has a mobile counterpart, and unless you need unlimited boards or some other advanced features, it's completely free. And why Kanban? Kanban's beauty is in its simplicity. It's proven and even works at large scale. In fact, Eric Breckner, who has been at Microsoft for over 20 years and even given talks at the likes of Google about the subject, pretty much has this area covered. I'll leave links in the description below where you can purchase his amazing book and see how he's used Kanban to manage large scale teams at Xbox. So cool. To get set up, follow the link in the description, which will invite you to this board and you can get signed up using a Google account or using any other email address. Once you've verified your email account, bada bing, bada boom, you're in. I gather it's probably a bad idea inviting everyone to this board, but let's just do it for the memes. Now it's worth going over how Trello is structured really quickly. Your Trello account is essentially made up of three parts, boards, lists, and cards. In this example, I've got a personal board and one for work. A board is comprised of lists and each list contains a number of cards. Cards are essentially the work item goal or thing that needs to be done. And as we look at in a second, cards move fluidly between lists. The last thing to note is that a board can have some visibility applied to it. It can be private, so only members you've invited to a particular board can view and edit it. It can also be public, so anyone on the internet can view it, but only members can edit it. Or you can get really fancy and create a team if you've got lots of boards that you want to add multiple people on. For our example, we're just going to leave it on private. Again, in a private board, only people you invite can see and edit the board. So look in our diagram. My wife and brother can't see or access the side hustle board and the team members can't see or access my personal Kanban. Right now, that's all the theory you need to know. Let's start Kanbaning. First, let's create our lists. You can do this by, you guessed it, clicking on add a list. For the vast majority of people, we need just three lists, to do, doing, and done. Now it's time to start populating your to-do list with some cards. Anything you need to do can go on here. So the context we're going to use is someone that's looking for a job and they want to remain productive and keep track of everything they need to do. So we'll create a few cards. We need to review our CV, update resume on redundant.group, apply for 10 jobs, watch five interview prep videos on YouTube, order Kanban book from Amazon, get suit dry cleaned for free at Timpson. A quick word on that last one. Timpson in the UK actually provide free dry cleaning if you're unemployed and going for an interview. I think it's just brilliant that they offer that. I'll put a link in the description to find a local Timpson that offers this service near you. Now then, back to our cards. All your cards should follow the easy to remember acronym SMART, meaning things should be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. This ensures you set goals that you can achieve and aren't vague about anything. So for example, a bad goal would be, I want to take over a part of the world someday. See, it's not specific, realistic, achievable, nor does it have a deadline. You're pretty much guaranteeing yourself failure here. Check out the full article on our website for more about SMART goals. So regarding our cards, they're not just headings. You can actually go into a lot of detail with them. Let's click on a card to see what options we have. We're able to set a description, add a checklist, set a due date and even add attachments. So let's take our first card about reviewing our CV. We can add a description like, my CV is a little out of date. I need to update my skills, experience and ensure there's no typos. We can even do this in the form of a checklist if it makes it easier to track. Using attachments, we can attach our CV. This comes in very handy if there's other members on the board. As in, if you're referencing something in your card, you can attach the file that you're talking about. Let's just attach a CV here. 
and we'll set ourselves a due date of tomorrow. I'm sure fellow procrastinators will love that. And that's it. We've detailed our first card. Now, when it's time to actually action this card, I simply drag it over to the doing column. Cards on a Kanban board move from left to right when there's progress and can even move back to the left if something has gone wrong or maybe you began doing something but you need to put it on hold till a later date. It's important to make sure you haven't got too many things in the doing column. You've really only got so much capacity to do stuff and if there's too many things, you'll find it difficult to get anything done. Once I've completed reviewing my CV, I want Samurai Jack to also give it a once over. I can click on the members button and it'll bring up a list of everyone that's a member of this board and I'll assign it to him. Hooray! I can also leave a comment like at Samurai Jack, take a look at this for me. Do you think it's any good? And he can reply with whatever he wants, really. Hmm. Okay, then. This is fantastic as we can keep a history of conversations that have happened and retrospectively look back at cards to understand if there was any dialogue about them. I can even click on the watch checkbox and I'll be notified if there's any discussions about this particular card that go on between members. Once the card has been actioned and done, you can drag it over to the done column and check that it has been done if there was a due date on this card. There's even a handy little color on the due date field to help you at a glance to see if things are due soon, overdue or complete. The last thing to help make things pretty is labels. Labels can help you visually group cards together. So if we had, for example, a few cards that had to do with shopping, we can either just click on a label to give it that color or better name the label so that anyone looking at it knows what that color represents. So we click this itty bitty pencil icon here and name it shopping. When we view the board, we can see which cards have which labels and clicking on a card will give you more details on that label. We can assign that label to multiple cards and even assign more than one label if you have something that kind of overlaps a few things. And that's pretty much it. Those are all the basics you need to know. We've covered some exciting things like boards, lists, the power of cards and what you put into them and even collaborating with other members. This is something you can even implement in your workplace and impress people with your newfound Japanese powers. The best way is to just create your own board, use it to manage things in your personal life and very quickly you'll see how much more effective you are in managing your own time and how much more productive you'll become. It'll help you sift out from the chaotic contents of your mind and just be better really. The mobile app is updated in real time as updates happen to your board and you can easily do all of the above as long as you've got a mobile device and an internet connection. It really is that simple. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and all the other nonsense and let's make it happen.